Hi, I'm Frankie Seshi, and I'm going to tell you guys a pretty effective way to find your PC's bottleneck. I use this, and it doesn't require too much expertise. All it takes is a little bit of time and logic. Let's go. Okay, so to do this, we're going to need two different programs. We're going to need Hardware Info, and we're going to need MSI Afterburner. I trust you guys know how to install programs, so the links are in the description. Go ahead and install these. For Hardware Info, you're going to want to either install 32-bit or 64-bit depending on what operating software you have. To check your operating software, to do this quickly, press the Windows key and the pause button and it will show you your system information. You can see that I have 64-bit operating system. Okay, we've got both programs installed now and here we have Hardware Info 64. Now it may say Hardware Info 32-bit based on which one you've actually installed. And we also have MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is actually responsible for doing the on-screen display and Hardware Info is basically telling MSI Afterburner what to display. So we have to configure that first. Double click it, click yes, sensors only, and then click run. Now while that's loading up, I'm going to show you guys a cool tip. I created a new folder and then named it Benchmark and then I basically created a shortcut for Hardware Info 64 and RTSS. Now, what's RTSS? RTSS is basically a portion of MSI Afterburner that's responsible for doing the on-screen displaying. We don't need to run MSI Afterburner, we only need to run this portion of it. To get to this portion quickly, right-click the icon, open file location, bundle, OSD server, and then there's RTSS. Create a shortcut and drag it to a folder of your liking go ahead and click out of all of those because we have hardware info open now. Gives us all this useful information about our resources, all of that good stuff. Let's go ahead and configure it. Click OSD and then here we have all of this. These are default always set to no and you can customize to your liking which one you'd like. If you'd like to follow my advice however I like to have my RAM load and you can basically click whatever you'd like click show value in OSD to turn it on or off and then customize its position. Lines are horizontal and columns are vertical. And so I don't like VID, I don't like clock, but I do find core usage to be important. Now I like to actually tick each individual core as opposed, of, as opposed to only selecting total CPU usage. Total CPU usage is not an accurate depiction of how hard your CPU is actually running. Alright, so I thought I'd take a quick second to explain multi-core processors on old games. Now I'm probably going to mess up a lot on this, so I ask for your forgiveness, but I don't want to have to redraw all of this. So basically, these are cashiers. This is McDonald's. These are your cores in your CPU, okay? We have a six-core CPU, let's say. We are trying to get all of these customers processed. We're trying to get through all of this information here. And so what's the fair way to do it? Well, we have, we have one, we have lines going through every single core, every single cashier. And it equals out to about a 16% share amongst the, amongst the cashiers for it to all be equal. Everybody handles 16% of the customers and everybody's happy they're not overwhelmed and it's always okay now with old games and even in the best conditions it doesn't really work like that with CPUs but especially with old games who don't really have good multi-core functionality it doesn't go it doesn't get dispersed that fairly let's say cores 5 and 6 or cashiers 5 and 6 are pretty girls they have beautiful hair and customers decide that they want to go to them instead they like cores 5 and 6 better. So, well, that messes all the ratios up. No one's getting equal shares anymore, and that's not quite fair. So, screw the 16%. These girls are getting 35% of the customers because they're so pretty. And then we have 30% left to be dispersed equally amongst cores 4, four through 1. That equals out to about 7.5% each. So, as you can see... That is by no means fair for cores 5 and 6. They're going to get overwhelmed, and it's going to make the entire business not run as good. That is exactly what is happening with your CPU when you're running older games. 
Older games tend to favor a dual-core platform, and they go to cores 5 and 6, or, it, or, or cores 1 and 2, and they favor those two cores, and those cores get overwhelmed and degrade the, the quality of the entire CPU as a whole, especially if you have a slow clock. So if you see that these cores are getting overwhelmed and these are using 100% of their resources and they're getting overwhelmed, we can see that we have a clear bottleneck here. We either need to play games that have good multi-core functionality or we need to get a faster CPU with more and more gigahertz. Okay, so we've got our RAM, we've got our CPU cores. What else are we going to need? Well, obviously we're going to need our graphics card. So keep scrolling down until we find GPU right here. You're going to want GPU D3D usage. That one's important. That's the one I like to tick off for yes. Okay, so after we've decided all the things that we want to have show in our on-screen display, we're now ready to run our TSS. Go ahead and click OK, and don't save and quit. Minimize it. Let's go ahead and open our TSS. Like I said, mine is in the benchmark folder I created. Double click our TSS and go ahead and open it. Now it's going to be minimized down here to your system tray. Right click the icon and click show. Go ahead and click global settings. You can create a custom profile if you'd like. Like for example, like you create a pro custom profile for Far Cry 3, but I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and click global and just make sure show on, dis on screen display is ticked. And you can choose whether you want it to start with Windows. You guys can mess with all these settings, but this is how I'm going to do it. Just make sure this one is ticked. That's the one that's the most important. And go ahead, you can minimize out of that. And let's go ahead and run our game now. Okay, so here is some Far Cry 3. I'm playing it in 1080p using one monitor with ultra settings. I have my CPU cores on the left side there. I have my graphics card in the middle and my RAM on the right. Well, what do all those numbers actually mean? It was telling me that each individual CPU core never really went above 60%. That's great news. That's telling me that my CPU has enough resources to display the graphics that I wanted it to display. That's awesome. That is not my bottleneck. My physical memory, my RAM, it was not my bottleneck. It never really went above 40%. It had more than enough resources. My graphics card, however, was running pretty high, above 95 most of the time, and it even went at 100 a couple of times. That tells me that my graphics card does not have enough muscle to do the job. I was running Ultra on Far Cry 3, so I could just tone down the graphics and repeat the test, but my graphics card still had quite a bit of load on it. That indicates to me that it's time to get a new graphics card or put another graphics card in the machine with it. The graphics card was my bottleneck. Okay, so we all know benchmarking programs like Fraps are awesome. They give us information about our frames per second, and they even let us know how fast our computers are. They can't, however, tell us what we should do to make those computers even faster. An inexperienced builder might think, just throw a graphics card in it, that'll fix the problem. And that's not always the case. If you get the biggest, baddest graphics card on the market and you throw it in your system, you're probably going to see no performance increase whatsoever if the components that are surrounding that graphics card aren't up to par. You need to have a good CPU and good RAM surrounding that graphics card to make your whole system a very efficient machine. Now I'm not saying that your graphics card and your RAM and your CPU are the only things that affect it. You need to have a nice motherboard and a good hard drive and all that good stuff to make sure you have a good computer. But those are the main things that you want to look for first. I'm Frankie Seshi and I hope you guys have found this tutorial useful in weeding out your bottleneck.